Hello again, it's Cliff here. Um, carrying on with our series on uh, grinding, uh, freehand grinding of tool bits. Um, this is going to be part two, and I want to go a bit more deeply into uh, precision grinding of uh, cutters, drills, uh, fly cutters, form tools, turning tools, and so on. I'm going to concentrate. Hopefully, I've got your interest with the part one, and um, and now I can go a little bit more deeply into it without it being too boring. All right, cheers. Okay, so on this part two video, we're gonna go into grinding a simple high-speed steel turning tool that is similar to the type of shape that you'd use in a fly cutter for a milling machine. Just a simple, straightforward, high-speed steel ground and lapped tool. One thing I've learned over the years um, doing my tool making work on a surface grinder and a cylindrical grinder is the importance of the state or the condition of the grinding wheel. Not just the grade and the type of the grinding, type of grinding wheel, but the state and the condition of the grinding wheel. How well dressed it is. The difference between a well dressed wheel is say 10 out of 10 and a badly dressed wheel is 1 out of 10. So you can hugely improve the grinding efficiency and um, number of operations you can achieve with a really correctly dressed grinding wheel for the application that you have. And this applies equally to bench grinding. Those lessons that you learn in tool making on a surface cylindr and cylindrical grinder are equally important for bench grinding. Um, and, and I know people that don't have a background in tool making won't all be fully aware of this, that a, uh, a grinding wheel needs to run beautifully true. If it, if it oscillates or vibrates or doesn't run true, it causes the work to vibrate and that causes the grinding to be very inefficient. Um, uh, on the other hand, if you diamond dress a wheel, you can get it per running perfectly true, but then it may be blunt. And not cut quickly so there's some real subtle points here that are really worth understanding I'll try and go into that now okay one of the first things you need to remember is that the grinding wheel has to run perfectly true it mustn't oscillate otherwise it will cause a vibration and the movement of the work even at a microscopic level this will cause a rapid breakdown of the grinding wheel and won't allow it to cut efficiently. So it's important to start off with a good single point diamond guided rigidly and very steadily is dressed with that diamond with it, the diamond shank bearing down on the tool rest and dress the wheel until it's running perfectly true. Now that, that is really important. You can't get it to run true using a star wheel dresser. That, that just won't, it'll, it'll give a lovely sharp wheel, but the diamond is required to get it to run true. So the first stage is you must diamond dress it. Now if it's a roughing grinding wheel and you want to be able to rip into your metal, that diamond dress wheel will have the grains slightly bluntened by the diamond unless it's a very new diamond and so you need to then open up the wheel and expose razor sharp grinding grains with something like a, a star wheel dresser and you just push that in fairly hard and work it backwards and forwards I'll, I'll show this in a minute but it'll be really noisy so I just want you to understand the theory of it then you'll have a wheel that will give a rougher finish will cut really efficiently and not generate much heat. If you buy a reasonably good quality grinder, bench grinder for your main tool grinding work, it should come with reasonably good quality grinding wheels. But if you buy, buy a very cheap quality grinder, you may need to buy better quality branded grinding wheels, such as Norton or whatever is the good brand in the country where you are. Um, a good quality grinding wheel will cut a lot better than a cheap grinding wheel that may have something like sand in it as a filler or some other dreaded ingredient that you really don't want to be breathing in. Um, and it's really important that those grinding wheels are securely mounted. Um, if they're slightly loose, 
you're never going to get them running true and staying true. They must be firmly locked up um, in place. And uh, so carrying on with the grinding. So that's your diamond dress and star wheel dress the roughing wheel to get the maximum cutting speed and cool cutting. But the finishing wheel should just be carefully diamond dress and left like that. Now it'll be slightly less fast cutting because the grains will be slightly truncated, the tops will be dressed off some of them, but that's a good thing because you're just taking a very fine finishing cut and you want a good surface finish. So what I've shown you here is just a really easy way to do diamond dressing. You, you buy your half or one carat diamond in a stick, should only be something like 10 or 20 dollars on eBay maybe a little bit more in New Zealand, but you know, you get the idea, it's not a lot of money. Um, and you can lock it up with the tool maker's clamp and slide it like that. That's, that's really easy and almost anyone can do that. I mean, I built a special little fixture that's got a slide way in it and it clamps onto the tool rest and it's got micro adjustment here, which is slightly nicer and you can get a slightly better dressed wheel, but really, you're kind of uh, almost as good with something as simple as this. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't encourage everybody to go to that sort of trouble. Quite a bit of work to make something up like that. The other essential thing to have when doing precision tool grinding is a really good lamp, a really good light, something that you can move to the left, to the right, and really be able to see closely what you're doing and unless you've got very young eyes you'll need some kind of binoculars on your head so that you can really magnify the cutting edge and see exactly what you're doing with the light optimized that makes freehand grinding a much more precision process if you have magnification and really good light general purpose Good quality grinding wheels are typically grey grade aluminium oxide grit and they're adequate for grinding high speed steel if they're correctly dressed. Um, you'll typically have about a 60 grit for a finishing wheel and a 36 grit for a roughing wheel. And although there are specialty grades of wheels that are better for high speed steel, the general purpose grades, if they're correctly dressed, will do a fine job. Okay, enough theory, let's get down to it. So we've clamped up our diamond dresser firmly on the toolmaker's clamp so it's nice and stiff. We're going to hold it rigidly down on there and we're going to dress the surface of the wheel so that it's running true. We're not so much worried about the surface finish because this is the roughing wheel. It's about a 36 grit and we just want to get it running true with nice sharp edges. Going to make some noise now. Hyperventilated so I'm full of oxygen. I don't need to breathe or use my mask for a while. Okay, let's make some noise. Okay, that's running nice and true now. You'll have to take off more than that if it's not running true to start with. Now we want to expose the grains of the wheel. Star wheel dresser. That was a bit rough, but you get the idea. Okay, well let's talk about tool grinding. I'm trying to keep it concise and keep your interest up. Um, but I need to do a little bit of background from time to time. So let's look at the end result we want with a lathe tool. Let's, let's draw a really common shape lathe tool. Okay, let's start at the end then. Here's our bit of stock. And let's say we're turning a typical job. Here's the center line of the part. And we want to be able to face and turn. So we probably want a tool with a little bit of clearance there, small radius and a little bit of clearance there. 
and we want to have a shape that can be continually reground on the tool um, and only have the effect of shortening the tool, not, not paint ourselves into a corner with a shape that um, doesn't allow us to regrind. So we need a shape tool something like that with a slight angle on there. We probably want a bit of clearance here and then there's your tool bit, something like that. So that is then presented to the part that type of shape. Um, and ideally, you want your tool post to be square because you need it to be square for parting tools and other types of tools. So if you want uh, to get round that, you can make a tool holder, something like that. And this way you can use smaller tools um, and that's already presenting the tool on an angle. So that's the background of the tool shape. Now I'll go into um, a bit closer into how you would grind that shape and what it looks like up close. Okay, well let's look at that closely. You can see here, this is a bit of ASAB 17 made in Sweden. Now that is a high grade, high speed steel. It's halfway to tungsten carbide. It's so hard. You can only just grind it. You've got to have a really good, well-dressed grinding wheel um, to grind ASAB 17. It's a high cobalt, high class, high speed steel, and it will hold its edge for a long time. So you can get away with very steep top rake angles with ASAB 17. And you can see there I've got quite a steep top rake angle. That makes it suitable for um, aluminium and also is fine for steel. If I was going to be turning D2 steel or uh, non-free machining high tensile steels, I may have a little bit less top rake there. Then you've got front rake, uh, front clearance. I'll just get something to help show the way. Okay, so that's your front clearance there, that angle. And then we have side clearance that way. And you can see looking down on it, what I was talking about before, we have a shape here. It's tricky holding the tool and the camera, which allows you to re-grind it back and back and back as you're grinding that shorter. Um, so that's there's many different ways and styles for grinding a high-speed steel tool. Um, and what I'm showing you here is just one of many. But this seems to be a shape that I've sort of morphed into over the years, a really useful shape. So I'm, I'm showing you these shapes so that you know what I'm doing when I come to the bench grinding part. Okay, let's do a little bit of finished grinding. I put some black felt pen on the tool bit. Getting our light as best we can. You can see there, I'm just shy of the cutting edge. So I'm starting back a bit and working forward. Starting back a bit and working forward. And there we've almost cleaned it up. Now let's do the front. I've got felt pen on it again. A bit awkward working around the camera, but. See where I'm grinding there? I'm just shy of the cutting edge. And now we've cleaned it up right to that sharp edge. Okay, let's go into diamond lapping. So, first of all, you need a diamond lap. Uh, let's just back off a minute something like this, an easy lap, um, a fine, or uh, you can buy them in sets. Um, 
Where's my really fine one? Super fine is the blue one. I tend to just use fine or super fine, so probably you don't need to buy a set. You're just going to end up with coarse ones that you never use. So let's just do this with a fine because it'll cut quicker for demonstrating. If you want a really good finish, use a super fine. Put a little bit of kerosene on it. And see if I can do this without bumping the camera. Um, so we're, we're resting on that face, the finger behind it, and we get a motion going that's in full contact there. Hopefully you can see that. So you're sort of settling into that. What you don't want to do is round it that way, obviously. So we've got the full contact of the flat surface of the lap, the diamond lap there. Now we're just going to roll it round in full contact. And also lap the flat surfaces if you're feeling confident and you've got a really good lap. I'm a bit cack handed here so I'm probably not doing a very good job but you get the idea. You're generating that radius with that type of approach. Um, right. Okay, so now hopefully we can see that radius that we've just lapped on there. And we've got that nice finish on the radius, diamond lapped finish there, going around there. That's it in principle anyway. Uh, it was a bit awkward trying to film it, but you get the idea. It, it gives a nice lapped radius there. Well, there we are. That about wraps it up. Um, <laughs> it's getting a bit dark, isn't it? Um, burning the midnight oil. So here we have a tour mark. And what it looks like at night time. Hold on. Put the lights on. Thanks for watching guys. Um, a simple video part two on simple uh, grinding and lapping of square tool bits for uh, turning and fly cutters. Cheers. Mm -hmm.